Uh, so we have, we're hearing now uh, that Stephon Diggs is looking to enter the transfer portal away from the Bills. Former Fox Sports Radio morning host. I don't know whatever happened to Stephen A. Smith, but he did a morning show years ago. And he said the wide receiver wants out from Buffalo. Talking about Diggs. Would prefer to be gone because he has lost a level of belief in the team. If you're not a true believer, you can't play for the Buffalo Bills. Uh, clearly. Now, Diggs went on a social media tirade. I don't know if tirade is the right word, but he went on social media to deny. Deny, deny, deny. That's uh, what he did. The story said 100% not true. This is a quote 100% not true. I don't know who the source, and then he put a emoji face in there, is, but I thought. I uh, nipped this blank in the bud already. Uh, Okay. Apparently not. So let us discuss the question. Are you buying or selling Stephon Diggs' denial in terms of a trade, that he is looking for a trade? He's denying that. Are you buying or selling that Stephon Diggs is looking for a relocation situation. So uh, in terms of him looking for a trade, I am buying that he's looking for a trade. I am, on the other hand, uh, selling the fact that he's denying that he wants a trade. I've got Powdery Mix, Yellowstone, and Dunce Cap. And I will combine all these things together, and we are going to make a decent, sports radio game show contestants. We, we did not have that last hour. I'd like to apologize to all the affiliates down the line. That guy, Ron, from San Antonio. Oh, my Loser. God. I mean, the stench, the stench coming off the microphone uh, from his end. Unbelievable. Now, to kick off here, we take Stephon Diggs' denial with a little pinch, little pinch of salt is what we do here. Everything has been heading in the direction of Splitsville. He is a unpredictable human being, your standard issue diva wide receiver. Been doing this a long time. Every generation has a couple, and Stephon Diggs is the gold standard for this generation of diva wide receivers. And as an unpredictable diva, 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 uh, Stephon Diggs has been stewing in Buffalo for a while now. It started at least during the late stages of the 2022 regular season and then the playoffs. We remember the meltdown that was caught by CBS cameras against the Cincinnati Bengals in the playoffs, and it continued through the off-season program. It is a recipe for good sports radio, but if you happen to be a Bills apologist, it is a recipe for disaster because you have the powdery mix in Buffalo, they know a thing or two about the powdery mix, but in this case, we're not talking about the Lake Effect Blizzard. Instead, we are talking about the powder keg, is what we're talking about. And Stefan Diggs is ready to blow his short fuse at any moment, and then it will go ka boom, uh, just like that kaboom. And uh, is it true? Is it true that Stephon Diggs made some comments behind closed doors about wanting out? I'm going yes. Is it also true? Is it also true that someone relayed that hissy fit behind closed doors to Stephen A. Smith? Sure is. Uh, They have tried in Buffalo to bury the hatchet. They played good cop, bad cop, and uh, put on a happy face and do a happy dance and all that stuff. Uh, But the smart money is once a mind is made up, it does not change, and Stephon Diggs is going to go full hammerhead on Josh Allen and Sean McDermott and the power brokers there in Buffalo. All right, now furthermore, turning the page here, let's go now to Jerry's World. We're going to Jerry's World. Here's why. Because it has happened yet again. Oops, it happened again. Jerry Jones, he liked the team so much he bought it. The general manager slash owner of the Dallas Cowboys. Jerry Jones thinks that, wait for it, thinks that this is the year. This is the year the Cowboys will end the Super Bowl drought. If you were to go to the archives here at Fox Sports Radio, 
you could put together Maller monologues from every single year going back over 20 years where Jerry Jones has said something similar. That this is going to be the year. We like our team. We think we're in good position. You look around the NFC, there's nobody better than us and all that. So uh, say what? Uh, Yeah, so here's the latest version of the same rant. Uh, Jerry said, I know how hard it is to win one of those, meaning a Super Bowl. He told the very happy-go-lucky NFL propaganda morning show. Uh, He also said you shouldn't give up the ghost because you fall short in a highly competitive league. And then he said just because we haven't won it in so long does not make What we've done, meaningless, Uh, opining Jerry Jones went on to say, and I think this year we're in a better position to win it than we have been in years. We have the team. We have the quarterback. Close quote. Yeah, that's the ticket. That is the ticket there, Jerry. Now, is this year any different than the previous years regarding the Dallas Cowboys' Jerry Jones and his Super Bowl hype actually proving to be correct. Is it any different now, this year? Does it stand out than any of the other previous years with Jerry Jones and his hyperbole? And the scales are leaning towards N to the O, as in no. Now, that said, uh, Jerry Jones is old faithful at Yellowstone National Park. He is. He's the NFL's tallest geyser. He's the most reliable geyser the NFL has. And every 90 minutes or so, on average, just like Old Faithful, Jerry Jones will blast a boiling hot take out of his big fat mouth there, and he'll shoot it in the air everywhere. And uh, Dallas is the only franchise In the history of the NFL, which goes back over 100 years, the only franchise in the NFL to have two quarterbacks start three games in the divisional round and not advanced past the divisional round. Can I get a hell yeah to Dak Prescott and Tony Romo? Yeah. Uh, Denied the opportunity to get to the Final Four in recent decades People goofed on me when I pointed out the L.A. Clippers made the Final Four a few years ago. But think about the Dallas Cowboys. They can't even get to the Final Four in the modern era since social media came around. And so the Cowboys have 12 straight playoff appearances without making the conference championship game. That is the longest drought in NFL history. They're at the very top. Congratulations. Now, outside of some kind of -of out-of-body experience, a metamorphosis, do we expect Dak Prescott to get it done? No, of course not. Dak Prescott is living the meme life. You're not that guy, pal. You're not that guy. Yeah, you're just not that guy. Yeah, that's Dak. And we saw that last year. Last year is a textbook example in the playoffs Dak Prescott against a minor league outfit in Tampa Bay that didn't even deserve to be in the playoffs, had a losing record. Dak Prescott went out, treated it like week two against the Atlanta Falcons, put up monster stats, looked like a great quarterback, and then played the 49ers, a legitimate defensive team, and Dak Prescott took a ride on the Vomit Comet so bad that Ezekiel Elliott of the Patriots tossed the final pass or lined up under center there the final Final play of that game. Now, parting shot. Let's go to Gotham. Another story that comes around every so often regarding a certain player in training camp. It is This time it's about Daniel Jones. So I saw a headline, and it caught my attention. So I wanted to give it a mention here. So maybe you saw this, maybe not. So there was a very braggadocious headline that Danny Dimes has gained about 10 pounds of raw muscle 10 pounds of muscle in the offseason, and he's moving better than he has at any point in his career. He's playing fast. He's playing fast. That's the report. Now, Daniel Jones, we know he's going to be under an immense amount of pressure, blah, 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 because he's uh, he's a stiff, 
and he's playing in New York, and the Giants are a bunch of dunderheads, and they gave Daniel Jones a $160 million deal, even though he didn't earn it. They gave it to him anyway because they're morons. So I ask the question, the Giants' Daniel Jones having reportedly added 10 pounds of raw muscle this offseason, should the NFC East be worried? Should the NFC East be worried about Daniel Jones? Uh, and I give this side-eye. I give this one side-eye. Now, SI's Burt Breer should have to wear a dunce cap. He's the one that wrote this gobbledygook. Writing about NFL players or any players in professional sports being in the best shape of their lives at training camp is the personification of floating on the lazy river of sports media. That's that's it in a nutshell. That's it. You know, it's like, what are you doing? Like, uh, you're, you're telling me you're 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 going to go in depth on his personal trend. Who is his personal trainer? They dig up Richard uh, Richard Simmons. Is uh, I guess he's still around, not working. But the the number of jumping jacks, burpees, push ups, sit ups, uh, Zumba workouts, you name it, hot baby yoga poses like the Sean Watson, the creepy quarterback. Uh, did you count all those to determine that? Danny Dimes is in the top shape of his life. Now, Daniel Jones, on his very best day, is a baseline quarterback. And we don't see that very often. Now, last season, many NFL pundits said he put it all together. Daniel Jones was amazing. And I went back to look at my notes. And the Giants passing offense last season when they won all those games was ranked 26th out of 32 teams. The real life vanilla Vic, but he's added ten pounds of raw muscle. He's gonna run around like Adonis. Uh, okay, I'll believe it when it happens. Check. We'll check back on that.